Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is decode base. So we are given a string as containing only digits. We have to return the number of ways to decode it. So to decode it, we're going to use the letters in the alphabet to the digit mapping. So A is 1, B is 2, through Z is 26 because there are total 26 letters in the alphabet. So to decode our encoded message, all digits must be grouped together then mapped back into letters. So if you're given the string as input, so this is A, this is A again. This entire thing is J and this entire thing is R. So this is one way of mapping it. And here you can see, you can map like this, which will give you K. You can map 10 to J and map 6 to F. We can map this to K. We can map this to A, but you cannot map the entire thing 0, 06 because 0, 06 doesn't have any encoding. 0, 06 is different from 6. And you cannot map a single zero because there is no encoding for zero. So let's take these examples and see how we can develop the logic. So let's take these three examples and see how we are getting the output. So first example, S is equal to 12. So we start with the first character. This can be formed to A. Now we take with the last two characters. This will be formed to L because 12 is, so this is coming from 1 and this is coming from 12. Now I took the first character and added the second, added 2 to it. So it became AB. So I'm using this previous value to form the current value. So we can form a DP array, which will be of the same length as S. S length is 2, so this will also be 2. And always the first character inside the DP array will be 1, because there is one way to encode a single character. So if the ranges of that character is between 1 through 9, we will get 1. It can also be from 0 to 9. So in the first case, before starting our checks, we will check if the first character is a 0, like in this case immediately we will return false. So from the next check, we will be sure that the first character will be from the range 1 through 9. So since this is 1 and now we start a iteration from i is equal to 1. So this is 0, 1, i is 1. We check the current value and previous value. Since this whole thing is between the range 0 to 26, there is our encoding. Add 1 to that and it will become 2. So total there are 2 encodings. So 2 is the answer for this question. Let's take the second example. S is equal to 226. Now let's form the DP array, which will be of the same length as S. The first character is going to be 1 because we already checked this condition. Now we start an iteration from here. I is equal to 1. It is a 2. So we combine this. So 2 will be added with 2. And 22 has the encoding. So 22 is equal to V. It will take the previous value 1 plus whole thing is V. So this is 1. So 2 is B. The whole thing, it will become V. If I add 2 to this, it will become B, V. And if I take the combined thing, it will become V. Now I will append 6 to these two characters. So B, B and V will be there. And 6 is equal to F. So I will add F here, F here. And now I can take the entire 26 and add it to B. So this will become B and entire 26 will become Z because Z is equal to 26. So I will take the two characters from here, from 1 and this will become 3. So I am adding this 1 plus this 2 will give me 3. And I will return the last character, so 3 will be the output. And in this case, the entire thing is false because it is starting with 0. Now we have to handle few edge cases. We are treating only the last character or the second last character combined. We are not taking last three characters because there are encodings only from 1 to 26 and 26 is a two digit number. There is no point of taking a three digit number and check for mappings. There won't be any mappings for that three digit number. So we have to deal with one digit or two digit number. Now we have to check the edge cases for this two digit number. If this is a zero and this is a zero. So this is one case, if this is a 0 and this is not a 0, so this is second case, and third case is this is not a 0 but this is a 0, both cases both are not zeros, like in this case 26, both are not zeros. Now we have to handle these four edge cases inside if statements, so I write down these four, four cases and see how we can handle them using examples. Now this is the first case, this is the second case, this is the third case and this is the fourth case. Let's take a case where last character is 0 and last second character is also 0. So here last second last character is 0 and last character is also 0. Now let's form the DP array. So this will be of the same length. The first character is not a 0 so it will have a value of 1. The second character is 2. So we start our iteration from here. i is 1. So this case will be satisfied. So it will check last two characters is not 0. Last two characters is not 0 means 
we'll check if the value 22 is greater than equal to 26 yes so it will take dp of i minus 1 plus dp of i minus 2 i minus 1 is 1 dp of i minus 2 is not there so it will take 1 so this will become 2 so till here there are two encodings now it will check i is here it will check these two characters it is 26 so again this condition will be executed since this was absent in the previous case we replace the whole thing with 1 dp of i minus 1 was 1 and this is 1 1 plus 1 will become 2 now i is at 6 it will take that character and the character before it which is 26 which is z so the encodings are b z now it will check 22 and 6 22 and 6 is vf and now it will check 2 2 6 which is bbf so this will give you 3 and now we are going to check this character i is here and it will check these two characters and i minus 1 is this so it will check for this case second last character is non-zero and last character is zero so second last character is non-zero and this is zero this entire thing is 60 which doesn't have an encoding so we set dp of i to 0 so the current value is 0 so till here it means of length 4 there is 0 encodings because 2 to 6 0 will not have any encoding uh, this is i this is i minus 1 so this condition will be passed where both are zeros if both are zeros again dp of i will be 0 because 0 0 doesn't have any encoding so set this to 0 and finally last step is to return dp of last and output is 0 so obviously 22600 0 can be mapped to 0 encoding so 0 is our output because the entire thing doesn't have any value now we'll just replace the last character and make this 2 so we saw how we are processing till here now i is here it will check i and i minus 1 again this 2 is 60 60 doesn't have any encoding since 60 doesn't have any encoding we set dp of i to 0 now move i further so this is i and this is i minus 1 so this case is satisfied so we set dp of i to dp of i minus 1 because 0 2 does not have any value together whatever is value is there for this will be added to this so this is 0 and finally again this will be returned as the output so for this there is 0 encodings because the whole thing does not make any sense now again let's take a new example let's take this so we are at i and this is i minus 1 this whole thing is 62 again 62 so this case is non-zero and this is non-zero so 62 is greater than equal to 26 this condition will be passing so we set dp of i to dp of i minus 1 this will be 3 now move further now i is here and i minus 1 is this so it will check these two characters and this condition is satisfying because last second character is a 2 since this is a 2 the whole value is 20 and 20 has a mapping of t so if that is the case then dp of i is equal to dp of i minus 2 so i minus 2 is this so this value will be picked up here an important case is that if we are doing i minus 2 and if the length of the input array was only 2 and it will check i minus 2 which will give dp of minus 1 so this is out of bounds right so we have to check if i is greater than or equal to 2 only then we have to process dp of i minus 2 that i'll show you during coding and finally for this example the output is 3 now we check this case i is here i minus 1 is this combined it is the 62 62 is greater than or equal to 26 so this will be satisfied so this value will be picked and 3 will be added here now move further i is here and i minus 1 is here entire thing is 23 and this case satisfies because both are non-zero and 23 is less than or equal to 26 so this is satisfied and if statement we have to add dp of i minus 1 plus dp of i minus 2 so we have to add i minus 1 is this and this so 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 so 6 is our output for this question so make sure you are forming the outputs so 2 2 6 and 23 or 2 2 6 2 comma 3 so these two outputs and important thing is that you have to take only the last character or last two characters because you handle only one digit number or two digits number there's no need to check three digit number because they won't have any encodings because encodings are only present from 1 to 26 which are max two digit number coming to the function given to us this is the function name and this is the string s and the return type is an integer representing the number of ways so i have written the same steps which i have explained so let's follow these steps and code them up 
So first base check is that we have to check if the first character in S is 0 then we have to return 0 like in example 3 here. So here as you can see S is 0 6 since it is starting with 0 it doesn't have an encoding so you return 0. So that is the first step. So if the first character is a 0 then return 0. Now we have to create a DP array of size length of S. And in the third step we have to assign the 0th index as 1 inside the DP array. So DP of 0 is 1. If there is only one character there is one way of decoding it and we already checked that single character is not a 0. So if it is a single digit number from 1 through 9 it will have an encoding of 1 because there is one way of decoding it because 1 through 9 is a to i. Now we have to start our iteration from i is equal to 1 because we already dealt with a single digit character. Now inside this for loop, now inside this for loop there are 4 cases if the second last character is 0 and last character is a 0 if both are 0. If the second last character is a 0 and the last character is a 0 then we assign dp of i as 0. Now coming to the second case if the second last character is a 0 but the last character is not a 0 then we assign dp of i is equal to dp of i minus 1. So let me copy this condition and change the last character to non 0. Then dp of i is equal to dp of i minus 1. I'll make this else if. Now again in the third case if second last character is not 0 and last character is 0. So let me copy this and make the second last character as non 0 and last character as 0. So if this is the case now we have to do another check if the second last character is a 1 or a 2 because if it is greater than 3 then the value will be 30 through 90 because last character is 0. We are checking for the second last character if it is 1 or 2 only it will have encoding right because here if last character is 0 there is only two options j or t j is 10 and t is 20. If second last character is 3 or greater it will become values 30 to 90 and 30 to 90 don't have encodings so that will come in the else block. So I copy this. So if the second last character is a 1 or second last character is a 2 then dp of i is equal to dp of i minus 2 else dp of i is equal to 0 because there is no range for 30 to 90 it will have dp of 0. Now coming to the fourth case we can directly put it in the else block because we process the three condition the last condition is going to be if second last character is non-zero and last character is also non-zero if both are non-zero there are 26 possibilities right if both are non-zero so we need to check if the value is less than or equal to 26 so i'm going to substring the last two characters is dot substring of i minus 1 to i plus 1 we are doing i plus 1 because this will be ignored in substring and it will return i so i minus 1 is the last second last character and i will be returned for this which is the last character we will form a substring we need to check if this value is less than or equal to 26 since 26 is an integer value and this is a string value I need to convert the string value into integer using parsint method. So integer dot parsint and I place the substring inside. This will convert that sub substring into a integer. Now we have to check if it is less than or equal to 26. If it is less than or equal to 26 we have encodings for that here. So dp of i is equal to dp of i minus 1 plus dp of i minus 2 and in the else block it means that the value is greater than 26 then we only take dp of i minus 1 and finally we have to return the last element so this for loop will happen for all the characters inside the string s and the dp array will be filled and our answer is present in the end of the dp array so return the last element inside the dp array now we finished all the steps but there is one more step we have to check so whenever you are doing dp of i minus 2 if the length of the entire array is 2 if the length of the string is 2 and if i is pointing at the last index i is equal to 1 right if i is equal to 1 1 minus 2 will give you dp of minus 1 dp of minus 1 will go out of bounds so we will execute this only if there is a length is supported so we have to check if i is greater than or equal to 2 if i is greater than or equal to 2 only then we take 
dp of i minus 2 if it is going out of bounds we will set dp of i as 1 because there is only one encoding which is possible and similarly here too we have to do the same so i copy this whole thing and replace it with this now our code is complete now let's run the code our test cases are being accepted let's submit the code and our solution has been accepted so time complexity of this approach is o of n because we are iterating through the input string from starting to end so n is the length of the string s and the space complexity is also of n because we are using 1d dp array to form our output that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video